the world's largest rocket. A NASA spacecraft. Boeing Starliner spacecraft. The most ambitious SpaceX uncrewed mission yet. Okay, the space industry is projected to be a $2 trillion industry by 2035. To put that into perspective, that is bigger than the entire global agriculture industry today. By tripling in size in just one decade, space is gonna become an even bigger part of our critical infrastructure, enabling everything from GPS and global high-speed internet, better weather forecasting and climate modeling, and even advanced healthcare. Simply put, you want to be paying attention to the space industry. But I get it, that's hard, and it can be really overwhelming. So every month, I'm gonna put together this video on the coolest space news stories that you might have missed. We'll cover the technology, but also the business and financial and regulatory and marketing sides of the industry. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We started off the month with two back-to-back -back deep space missions. The first one launched on October 7th by the European Space Agency. It's a mission called Hera, and it's going to an asteroid called Dimorphos. Now you might remember this asteroid's name because NASA sent a spacecraft called DART to slam into Dimorphos in 2022. The whole point being the dinosaurs didn't have a space program, but we do. So can we use a spacecraft to fundamentally alter the path of an asteroid so that it doesn't hit Earth and potentially wipe us all out? So when it arrives in 2026, Hera the mothership and its two little CubeSat children are gonna fly around and figure out what actually happened during that impact. They're also gonna study the asteroid's surface composition and the internal structure. And all of this is gonna help us learn how to deflect an asteroid in the future if absolutely necessary. The other deep space mission launched a week later on October 14th. This is a NASA mission called Europa Clipper and it is going to Jupiter's moon Europa. When it arrives in 2030, which I know is a long way off, but it's a really cool mission because it's going to be studying the icy Jovian moon and its subsurface ocean. Why are we doing this? Well, scientists actually think that Europa is one of the most likely places for us to find microbial life beyond Earth. This is because we think that the subsurface ocean has all the key ingredients for life water, energy, and essential chemical elements. But just like Hera, we really need to go up close and personal to study it and figure out what's really going on there. This is the first spacecraft dedicated to studying Europa, and it's a really exciting mission for astrobiology and finding life elsewhere and answering the really important question, where did we come from? Now bringing it back to Earth, on October 19th, a geocommunication satellite exploded. The telecoms company Intelsat reported an anomaly on one of their satellites that serves customers in Europe, Asia, and Africa. Shortly after that, the satellite broke up into 500 or more pieces of space debris. Satellites exploding doesn't happen every day, but it absolutely does happen, and this is usually because of an issue with its propulsion or power elements. Of note, the satellite did have a prior issue with its propulsion system, but the investigation into this particular issue is still ongoing. And Oh, by the way, who built the satellite? None other than Boeing. They really cannot catch a break this year, which is probably why it didn't come as a huge shock when rumors started swirling that Boeing is potentially selling off a large portion of its space business. This would likely include operations on the ISS, which they have owned for over two decades. It would also reportedly include its space taxi Starliner, which infamously left its two astronauts on the International Space Station earlier this summer. By the way, the astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams, are living and working on the ISS totally fine, and they are waiting on their ride home on a SpaceX Crew Dragon in February of 2025. Notably, the Boeing sale reportedly would not include its SLS contract. This is the rocket that is going to take humanity back to the moon as part of NASA's Artemis program. This isn't really surprising because this is a cost plus contract, meaning Boeing can just invoice the government for all costs over its original amount which they are continuing to do. Now, the rumors aren't confirmed yet, but in mid-October, Boeing's new CEO said, quote, we're better off doing less and doing it better than doing more and not doing it well. So it would definitely seem likely. Okay, now story number five, we're bringing it a little bit closer to home. You know on airplanes how annoyingly aggravating it is to try to get onto Wi-Fi only to realize it's $8 or $20 or something ridiculous. And then if you do have to get on it for work or something, it's like, incredibly slow and you can't really do much on it. Well, all of that is about to change. Starlink is now officially on commercial airlines as of October 22nd. This is about to be a huge game changer because Starlink is going to be offered for free and it's gonna be high speed, low latency, meaning you're not gonna have any connection issues and you're gonna be able to stream and game and even take Zoom calls, which honestly, I am not very excited about because I really don't wanna hear everyone's Zoom calls on a plane. So we'll have to see how long that lasts. But regardless, all for free. Another piece of SpaceX news is of course the iconic rocket booster catch with the giant mechanical arms. 
SpaceX really launched the largest rocket to ever exist, brought it back to the launch site, and with incredible precision, caught it in midair with giant metal chopsticks. Like, are you kidding me? That is insane. I know, oh, by the way, it was on their first try. Like the things that these SpaceX engineers do never ceases to amaze me. But it's more than just this really cool, insane feat of engineering. Catching it means we don't have to worry about landing it on uneven terrain, like on the moon or Mars, which is where Starship is intended to go. And theoretically, this will allow them to launch more things into space, either by increasing payload launch mass because you don't have to build in landing gear or carry fuel for landing, or by being able to launch more frequently. But I do need to emphasize that I don't think launching more frequently or launching more things into space should be the immediate answer for everything because of the environmental impact, which we're just beginning to understand. But I think this is a huge step forward in rocket engineering that is gonna change the game in so many ways. And lastly, we have the Prada Axiom spacesuit, which was revealed during the International Astronautical Congress or the IAC in Milan just a few weeks ago. Now this spacesuit is what astronauts are going to wear the next time we land on the moon which is so cool. But I have a whole video about this, including my thoughts on the whole thing, if you wanna watch it here. So there's the October space news that you might have missed. I'm gonna do another one in November, so be sure to hit that subscribe button if you like this type of content. Signing off.